thought for the next part we would look at the inner workings of the frame and also uh, how it works in conjunction with the bolt and actuator well, and, and the lock uh, to do what it does. Now, a couple of things. If you look at the gun itself, might have to back the camera up just a little bit. Good there. Everybody knows uh, that the cocking bolt of the act, uh, the cocking knob of the actuator, you just pull that back after, and put your magazine in and start firing. But what is not usually appreciated is, when, is that when General Thompson designed this weapon, he was an armaments uh, brigadier general, and he knew that there was going to be some, especially from manufacturer to manufacturer, there'd be some differences in the powder charges in the various cartridges. Some would be a little more potent, and some would be less so. So he very brilliantly uh, allowed for uh, a fudge factor in his bolt uh, that allowed for a weaker round to go off and still not jam the gun. If you listen to this, I'm going to cock it back slowly. There's two clicks and it'll stop on either one of them. That's the first click. That's the second click. And if you shoot around through this, it's got a little less of a powder charge. It'll, it can still click on that first click and keep right on going. It is that way because General Thompson uh, wisely put two ledges on the bolt. And, and for this, and it, still today, this uh, gun at 71 years old practically never jams. The only uh, misfire I've ever had was exactly that where the bullet chambered and the firing pin uh, made the appropriate mark on the uh, cartridge, but it didn't go off. The, the reason that it never jams, or practically never, is because General Thompson designed two levels uh, of catch for the bolt. Now this is the bolt and actuator assembly, along with the blish lock. And as you can see, that blish lock can go up and down. So that when the uh, gun is, prepared, is cocked back and preparing to fire, the blish lock is up. When the bullets, uh, when the trigger is pulled and the uh, bolt falls forward and gets into position, the blish lock goes down, locks into place uh, at exactly the same time. The firing. The, the hammer is hit, the firing pin goes forth, and the shell uh, discharges. And not immediately after the bullet leaves, but uh, almost after the bullet, like I say, leaves the end of the barrel, the pressure inside falls just enough to allow these metal pieces that are pushed and initially stuck to each other, enough of the pressure goes off that that can click back and remove. And it's all argued uh, throughout whether the blish lock was uh, necessary or not, but uh, in the later models of the Thompson didn't have a blish lock and still worked fine. So in the latest models, the M1A1 didn't even have a floating firing pin and still worked fine. But it is, uh, it is uh, assured that the models 1921 and 1928 both had the blish lock and, and performed very reliably. So let's take a look at how this actually works. This is the handle and frame assembly. This is the bolt assembly. And inside the gun, it fits just like that. It fits just like that. There's the thing on the real gun. Could you see that, Gwen? Now, there is a recoil spring that's pushing here. And that first notch that we talked about on the bottom of the bolt is pushing the bolt forward, but it's caught on the sear. And when we pull the trigger, 
The trigger will go down on its pivot plate, which raises the trigger, the rear of the trigger up, and raises the disconnector up, which pushes up the sear lever, which pushes up the sear, which rocks on its uh, pivot, and the rear of the sear, sear goes down, and then the bolt slides forward, collects the uh, shell out of the magazine, loads it into the firing port of the barrel. The uh, base part of the receiver uh, comes in contact with the hammer, which is underneath here, and uh, strikes it, which uh, drives the firing pin forward and fires it. And the, the uh, blish lock is cammed down at that point, and then it goes boom and after a little while it comes back up pulls back and if, the, if you're on full automatic and the trigger's still down it'll go right through the same thing again cam down load the uh, shell boom pulls back keep in mind this is happening at about uh, oh 10 to 14 times a second Goes forward, cam down, load, secure, firing pin, hammer, boom, and as the pressure falls, it cams back up again, pulls the empty shell out with the extractor here and the disconnector. I mean, the ejector will hit it and knock the shell out. And so for then when they let go of the trigger on full auto, it'll set back on the edge of the sear. Or if you've had a, a weak uh, cartridge in there, as General Thompson predicted, uh, you might, and you probably would, it'll catch on the second notch of the bolt. Still with enough power to load, fire, and come back. A, a, a rather brilliant uh, scheme that was worked out. This was uh, one of the world's first submachine guns in the the first uh, in the United States. Now, when this uh, is wanted, uh, not for full auto fire, but for single auto fire, we're gonna take a look at the bottom of the bolt. There is a little groove in the bottom of the bolt where uh, that rocker that we pointed out that is on the otherwise known as the uh, selector switch, which can select either full auto fire or single uh, fire. That pull goes through the groove right there. Now ordinarily in full auto fire, the rocker is below the level, this little uh, ground level, and it won't catch at all as the bolt's going back and forth. But when we turn this from full auto fire to single auto fire, the rocker comes up a little bit. And see, uh, Ms. Camera Person, if you can get a tight view of that area right there. Can you see that? All right, that's on single fire. That's on full auto. Single, full auto. You can maybe see. On single fire, it comes up just a little bit to where it's, it's the, hit, the little head of it is sticking up just barely above that uh, well that holds the trigger and sear. And when that is sticking up, I'm going to show you just with my fingernail first. And the bolt, press the trigger, and we want a semi auto fire here. The bolt will come down, it'll hit that uh, rocker as it's going forward and loading the gun. And once it's done that, the rocker will swing back and hit uh, under the disconnector switch, which will disconnect the trigger mechanism from the sear and the rear of the sear will fly back up. And now it's still under spring pressure, but as the bolt, uh, and the bolt's pushing it down, but then as the bolt comes back, that sear is already up and will not go allow another shot.